Welcome back guys and today's video we're going to discuss the Paris Air Show after popular demand and we're going to cover a lot of the EV toll companies that were there. There's going to be some of them that a lot of you might not have heard of. I'm pretty sure though we have some very knowledgeable people in the EV toll space that probably do know most of these if not all. Very similar to how they found Hover and after popular request we managed to get Brandon Robinson onto the call and we discussed it with him and at the moment they are flying pardon the pun so without any further ado i'm gonna go into one of the links that i was looking through today about the air paris air show and one thing you are going to want to stick around for is there was a major agreement between five major countries regarding the ev toll space that you need to stick around for so make sure you stick around to the end of the video but Without any further ado, let's jump into it. So this is a post from Airport Technology, and it basically has a tour of the eVTOLs at the Paris Air Show. And as this is a massive eVTOL space, I thought we need to cover what eVTOLs were at this show. And there were a lot. There might be some that none of you have actually heard of before and might be worth taking a look into. So let me know down in the comments if any of these tickle your fancy and you'd like us to do a video breaking them down and given a bit of a summary of them. So, starting off is EVE Air Mobility. And this is a very interesting one. I've been hearing a little bit about that and it's been popping up on my X. Um, so they mentioned that on the fringe of Paris Air Show, inside a large container shower, Air EVE Air Mobility, a subsidiary of the Brazilian company Embraer, displayed its passenger EV toll for urban air mobility missions. Even with a firm order with Revo, an urban air mobility operator, and an intent to build up to 54 units serving Brazil and the United States, EVE's EVTOL enters the market without a name. Wow, that is a brave one. Uh, what name do you think they should go with? Let me know down in the comments. Just to give you a bit of a, a summary, because a few of you might not have heard of EVE Air Mobility. I'm not sure if Liam has covered it, but I definitely haven't. So just to give you a bit of a feel of what EVE Air Mobility is, they've secured a 250 million firm order for 50 EV tolls from Revo, as I just previously discussed, and a letter of intent for up to 54 units with Future Flight Global for Brazil and the US, announced on June the 14th and June the 15th. In terms of certification, the big thing that we talk about all the time with these EV tolls, they're targeting FAA and Brazil's ANAC certification by 2027 with five to six prototypes ready for testing by 2026 and they're aiming for a thousand flight hours annually and that is double typical helicopter hours at this paris air show they unveiled a full-scale ev toll mock-up highlighting its four passenger electric powered design for urban air mobility one thing i did find out about these though similar to what i've just discussed is they have quite a robust order book and could we see Eve becoming a dominant player in this game? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. So now we have Ehang with their EH216S. And as you know, that is a Hustle Brother favorite. We absolutely slaughtered them the first time or the beginning of this channel where we found a report and it had security guys sleeping on the job, empty factories, bogus reports about their finances, but since then, they have soared. They are absolutely flying and they showcased all of their capabilities and progress that they've made in the last year and a half at the Paris Air Show. So they presented their passenger carrying EH216S at the Paris Air Show and it's the company's flagship offering and it has obtained new certificate types for type production and standard airworthiness issued by the Civil Aviation Administration in China. And this is something that we discussed with Mark on our stream on Friday, where there is actually two types of certification. So there's the type production certification and in the standard airworthiness. And they seem to be miles ahead of our US based eVTOL companies. They've also in January conducted a demonstration flight over downtown Shanghai. The company has also launched a trial operation of the eVTOL sightseeing route by the Huangpu River at Longhao Airport in Shanghai in preparation for the following commercial operations in Shanghai. This move aims to realize the urban air mobility missions in tier one cities. So whilst we're still pushing for certification 
and getting the design over the line and the manufacturing capabilities, Ehang have raced ahead. And it was somebody who we counted out, but are they a bit of a dark horse in this race? Will they find it very difficult to get into other markets? Because they have only got the certificate with the Chinese Aviation Authority. Will it be difficult to adjust that and go into other markets? We've got a very interesting part of this video later on when we're talking about five major nations coming together with an agreement in regards to certification. So make sure you stick around for that. And here we have it. Archer Aviation and the Midnight. And it was a great show for Archer. They actually showcased their Midnight aircraft at the Paris Air Show. Joby, however, only decided to send executives. Now we have the Archer Aviation Midnight. And out of all the eVTOL vehicles in Paris this week, Archer Aviation's Midnight aircraft appears to fly the farthest, 20 to 50 miles, with minimal charge between. The aircraft can reach speeds of up to 150 miles per hour. And if you haven't checked it out, we've done the first piloted flight in a video previously. And you need to give that a watch if you are a big Archer Aviation fan. But that's not my favorite part of this post. Let's scroll down a little further, and I think there's a little treat in for all of us who wanted to see inside the Midnight aircraft. So Midnight is configured to operate with a pilot and up to four passengers, as well as carry-on luggage. And it is recently named as the official air taxi partner for Los Angeles. And here we go, guys. This is what it will look like to sit inside the Midnight aircraft. There's the two seats, and there's obviously two seats behind that, and the pilot will sit in front of you. But that is the first glimpse we've seen of the actual Midnight aircraft at the Paris Air Show. And it just seems to all coming together. Are you willing to go into that? Would you be willing to be one of the first people to fly on the Midnight aircraft? Get your name etched in the record books? I think I would now that I've seen it. It does look futuristic. I like the seatbelts. They look like you're going to get strapped in as if you're going on a rocket. Um, it was very exciting times. Now this was an interesting one and it's slight deviation to our usual EV tolls where they are doing intercity jumps. These, this EV toll, Pipistrel Nuva V300. While the EV toll market still largely revolves around urban air mobility missions, as we've seen with the previous aircraft, Pipistrel, a subsidiary of Textron Systems, showcased its Nuva V300, which serves as a cargo carrier and a payload capacity of 600 to 900 pounds. I hope you're watching bag because this has quadrupled the limit that you had set on eVTOLs. And Nuva can carry up to three pallets at one time with ranges up to 300 nautic miles. The only thing that I would have as a slight concern and since we've been speaking to um, Mark, who is a private pilot and his engineering knowledge is just out of this world, and similar to Brandon Robinson, I would like to know if this is going to be a hybrid with that sort of range and that amount of weight they're carrying. I would be shocked if that was just a fully electric EV top. Oh, and here we have it. It was always envisioned as a hybrid solution. We have eight electric motors for the vertical takeoff and landing portion of the flight, but we have an internally combusted motor for the wing board portion of the flight which does give you that range duration. And here we have it. Just goes to show the Hustle brothers know what they're talking about. I actually can't take any of that credit. That is coming from the experts that we bring on this show and they share their knowledge with us. And luckily we pick it up as we go along. And I hope the rest of you at home are doing the same. So now that leads us to the big news. And that has come in the form of senior leaders from AAM, OEMs, applaud a five country alliance to streamline certification process for the eVTOL aircraft. And this is major news and I think everyone needs to hear about it. So the CEOs of Archer, Joby, Beta Technologies and WISC joined US Transportation Secretary Sean Duffy, who is actually playing a major part in pushing this forward with this cutting edge technology at the Paris Air Show on Tuesday to show support of the five country alliance which will streamline the certification and global deployment of eVTOL aircraft. That is exactly what all of us eVTOL enthusiasts wanted to hear. This alliance, which includes USA, UK, Australia, Canada and New Zealand, has the potential to create a smooth pathway to bring electric air taxis to the skies of other countries once a particular company 
obtains FAA type certification in the US. So here we have it, that the FAA are going to be the beer and maker of the EV tow industry. They will get to say if it is airworthy. And once they receive that airworthy certificate from the FAA, the UK, Australia, Canada, and New Zealand can all accept these EV tolls. And I think this is interesting for two reasons, mainly for where the places such as the US, Australia, Canada, and New Zealand, if they do get, if they do get approval in the US, they're going to expand their market to five different countries. And all of them are major countries. They've got a lot of financial backing. It does seem to be hotting up. And uh, as always, Adam Goldstein and Joe Ben seem to have pulled off a masterclass. So in a rare moment, Adam Goldstein, Carl Clark, Joe Ben Burvitt, and Sebastian Vigonon were all present together with James Walla, President and CEO of General Aviation Manufacturer Association and the acting FAA administration, Chris Macheu. Given an address, Duffy said, there is a push for innovation in America and there was a time when a government was creating rules and regulations which made it difficult to innovate in America. Those days are over. Now that sounds like fighting words if I've ever heard it. We're excited to announce a new roadmap to figure out a path of how we're going to deal with advanced air mobility. We should be on the same page and think we should have one framework which companies around the world can abide by. And I like this, simplify, streamline the process. We don't want to have to go through the same process in every single country, even if it means the FAA have to be more rigorous in their testing. I am all for this because once we receive one type certification, we will receive it for all five of these countries. And that expands our market share exponentially. So Roche, you said, all of the work that has gone in directly related to the leadership of the secretary and administration and making sure as we build out these innovative technologies in this sector, it's critical we think about the world. It's critical that we work to converge our validation and certification. And what I would think is quite interesting about this is once these five countries sign up, is there the potential that other countries will see that these five major nations have agreed and they may veto it and say, oh, we will just tag on or there might be an appendix where they can add in as well, if as long as they agree, obviously, with the certification process. So the sky's the limit. And I've got a lot of puns in this one, so I do apologize. But yeah, I think this is major news. It's brought a smile to my face and we just seem to be heading in the right direction. And if I am getting a bit too carried away, I'm pretty sure Bag will bring me back down to ground. We've developed a roadmap for advanced air mobility and type cert type certification. I think that might be in type, which is particularly important when we are thinking about exporting these products around the world. The roadmap aims to align countries with uh, advanced air mobility, airworthiness certification standards. My counterparts and I have so uh, signed a declaration of intent to implement the principle around this. And who better to ask about this then Adam Goldstein, Archer's founder and CEO, and if there was ever a man to get you excited about a stock, this is the man. If you ever wanted to see a bat signal go up in the air and say, advanced air mobility is here, EV tolls will be built, they will be certified and brought around the world. That is now. And as always with him, he just really does know how to pull on your heartstrings and get you excited. And I, I can't, I can never not Adam. I'm just hoping I want to make sure their design is going up and is following straight behind because from a public relation and a way of galvanizing people for the stock, I don't know if there's anyone better. So he goes on to say, the administration has made it clear leadership in advanced aviation is a priority for President Trump and the United States. The alliance paves way for the international deployment of our midnight aircraft and is another step towards bringing these aircraft to skies around the world. And I wonder what the deal is with um, Abu Dhabi. So of course, we're going to have to hear what Joe Ben Burvitt, the founder and CEO of Joby Aviation, had to say. We applaud the authorities for their efforts to co-lease around a common approach to approving EV tolls in their respective countries. We're grateful to the founding members of the NAA network for their vision and making this initiative a reality. So, man a few words, he won't <laughs> galvanize you as much as Adam, but Joe Ben is a genius and I think he's one that he likes to do it and then tell you rather than to hype you up and bring you along the journey with him. 
Um, two different approaches, and at the moment they are the forefront. If not Ehang, as we discussed earlier, but at the moment for the US market, they are at the forefront of this EV toll space. So, guys, that's all from the Paris Air Show from me. Uh, this is another big order or agreement in this EV toll space, just of the, the executive order Donald Trump signed on the drones. That was a major piece of news. Now, if you want to find out more about that, join me here where I explain it all in this video. Anyway, I will catch you over there.